Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 42, September the 9th, 2023. I am your host, Dr. Darina Shine, and I will be talking today specifically about an introduction of a business definition that I think we all should know in the 21st century. Okay, the one thing I'm going to talk about today is the Internet of Things, the things on the Internet that connects to other areas of life that are so vital to us right now and how that Internet of Things tie together, but can also be an issue in the future if things stop working. So welcome. How's everyone doing today? (laughs) This is a great chat. This is a great podcast today. We have 27 people in the chat, 27 to 7. I am grateful that you are here with us today. So according to your definition, what do you think the Internet of Things are all about? Let's see what you guys know. The Internet of Things. Okay. Okay. You're thinking about how the Internet works with a lot of electronic devices. We're also looking at things that allow devices to become objectionable in apps and forms of applications through web coding and designing, yes. So the simple definition, according to Google, is the collective network of connecting devices and technology to facilitate communication between the devices and the cloud or the application, as well as between the devices themselves. So how does that affect our world? The Internet of Things. So give me an example of what you feel an application of Internet of Things could be connected to. What, what, what are some things that we use in our day-to-day functioning that creates this relationship between the device and the internet connection, the database. Yes, we could. Yeah, we could look at that. Generators. When electricity goes out, that has been one of the most important you know, areas that we could think about in business because most businesses have what is known as commercial buildings. So in that, if lightning strikes and electricity goes out, the very thing we have is a backup. And even in some houses in the country, those are areas that can sustain extended, you know, uh, electricity when all others have nothing. They're in the dark. Yeah, the lighting system, exactly. The lighting, the electrical system in and of itself, whether there is a power outage or not. You walk into your home and the smart applications, you can tell your garage door to raise up or down. You can tell your um, your furnace to go from air conditioning to heat you can you can communicate with objects and in this technological savvy world that we've moved in since the pandemic i want to feel secure that these machines are going to sustain the need of service in which i may need in the near future so there was a a time when i was a cashier. 
And I was taught how to, you know, electronically give change back, do debit cards, credit cards, and checks. Well, one day we had an issue with the electrical system and the actual computers went down. We still had access to opening and closing manually the cash register. Many of us had not learned how to reverse back change. So if someone gave us, if if a, a bill came to $19.82, you know, and someone gave us a $20 bill, they didn't know how to calculate that in their head. $82.92, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then some change, some, some pennies. So... Imagine how that day was for our cashiers. It was devastating. So what what ended up happening was we ended up shutting down because we were so used to the electronic device doing all the work for us. And that's the question that I may have for, you know, my entrepreneurs today. If these communication networks shut down, Or if, for instance, it is um, the communication barriers come from someone, you know, sabotaging the system, how would we as Americans continue to work in our small base business? So these are things that I think are very, very valuable, along with, yes, yes, (laughs) yes, that is important. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the world, and if we don't stay connected to what is the most creative aspect of life, we're going to be in the twilight zone. We're going to be in the dark ages. We're not going to be able to move and maneuver forward. You know, um, sitting back as a business developer, I can remember back in 2020, or 2019, getting contracts for web coding and designing for students to come and, you know, create apps for businesses. Being a nonprofit, there's a lot of things that you can do. So uh, that was a generated, you know, opportunity. But then the, the pandemic happened and the idea was so new and so fresh, we didn't even have access and time to get the contract up and running. But we still stay consistent with the internet because most people began to use the internet internet for everyday reasons. You know what I mean? Kids were out of school, so they use computers virtually. So generating associated data and transmitting those data through the communications network are one of the major things that the um, collective network does. And again, the interface of any computer technology system has to go through what is known as a simultaneous aspect and process. So when you have these uh, interactive processing happening, then what is taking place is there's processes that go on along the way. What if one portion of the process malfunctions, you know, and these are things that we need to be very amazed at and helping ourselves to perform in a more productive way so that we can stay on top of, you know, technology because someone somewhere is artificially intellectualizing the machine. So that means there are a group of people with the mindset to put this into a process, right? You know, someone used the example about, you know, having Alexa and having a daughter named Alexa. And one of the things that they said was they had to go and get another um, another uh, frequency that wasn't from Alexa. I think it became iCloud or something like that because every time they called Alexa, Alexa thought that someone was calling 
her to perform a task in this Internet of Things. So they had to change their whole per- process. Who decided to call Alexa the system of, of you know, um, database finding? Who decided to call it Alexa? Did they think that someone's child would be named Alexa and they wouldn't know the difference? Because this is what I'm speaking of when I say that there are a group of people behind the scenes that are promoting and putting together the process. And are they thinking about that? Or are they just thinking about pushing it out to get us the technology that we need at the moment? You know, um, things that we use every day that connects to the internet, allowing us the control to receive data entry from things like our smartphone, from our internet, our podcasting platforms, all of these things, our our cryptocurrencies overseas, um, when we, you know, um, trade, you know, the trading system, Kraken, you know, all of these things are connected to the internet of things, as well as our bookkeeping, QuickBooks, our Zelle apps, our cash apps, our PayPal's, you know, all of these things are affiliated with the concept of internet of things. You know, since when can we tell a device to open up or shut down the light or have a smart camera that can put your fingerprint into the door that lets it know that you are who's registered? So it's taking a picture while you're pressing the button and your fingerprint is opening the door with the code And then your fingerprint is closing the door with the code. So then what happens is the monitoring system behind the application is dialoguing everything. And that is a great organized function. It prevents theft, you know, because a lot of people are not going to come onto a you know, residence or a business where you have to do all this electronic device stuff. But behind the scenes of everything, there are people who can unlock and break through and sabotage the system. And that's what we need to be aware of entrepreneurs in this situation, in this scenario, when you can consistently believe in your ability to be safe through technology, anything can go down. So having that backup plan in the internet of things will put you more at peace and put you more at ease if anything were to come to the fruition. You know, come down to it where, you know, something happens and the and the whole system shuts down. So let's think of three things right now that we can actually do. If. okay, we're going to look at three things we can actually do if the Internet of Things were to shut down. What can we do? How can we save our smart furniture (laughs) from being monitored or our systems from being able to advance high levels of security? That's a great thing. Always have a manual setup. Always have a manual setup. That is extreme. You know, my vehicle... When I got it, it had the electronic device for the trunk and I was able to, you know, push this button on the outside of the vehicle and, 
you know, everything was fine. Press the remote control. It opens up, shuts down. However, something happened to the button. I was unable to get into my trunk. It was very uncomfortable. It was very (laughs) unnecessary. So imagine putting big items in the trunk that I was used to having, you know, to do on a daily, regular basis as a business consultant, you know, so as a business entity, I'm buying bulk, I'm going to Sam's Club, I'm doing a lot of this stuff. So when I was unable to use my trunk, it made it difficult. But then one day, I don't know what happened. I finally got it open one day and I looked up and I said, oh, what is that little block in there? And it was a little block that was, you know, cut out and it had a casing over it. So I got my screwdriver and I opened it up. And guess what I found? Guess what I found, students? (laughs) Entrepreneurs, I found a manual device that pushes and unlocks the lock manually. And I said, oh my God. So all this smart vehicle, all these buttons and whistles and all this other stuff. And we go back to the manual way of handling things. What do you think about that? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You there there are times where you just have to go back to the old way of doing things. And that's one of the ways that we can benefit by making sure that we are always in the motion of being in control. And if that means finding another plan, if this breaks down, how would I get here? How would I do this? There was also, you know, a real cool thing on my vehicle that, you know, you press and link the garage door opener to a button on the when uh, the the visor of the, you know, the sun visor. When I went to press it, it didn't work. Something was wrong with the electrical devices on that. So... The next thing I had to do was purchase a garage door opener in order for me to get in <laughs> and out. So there's always there always has to be one, two, or three different ways that you're going to be able to sustain yourself in case of an emergency or an actual internet shutdown. Because if you think about it, your tracking devices all of the GPS tracking devices, all of the directions, the links and the apps to direct us to, you know, places that we're visiting or, you know, maps where we're getting ready to go and travel. So what happens if the application malfunctions? Absolutely, absolutely. We have a map. We have a map, a manual map. Because Google has taken me to places that were not existing as they did when Google put the application into into its database. So for example, we we went to Detroit, uh, Michigan. And when we got there, we were looking for a specific location. And we followed the map from Google and went into a old trailer park area that was deserted. And as I'm going through with my friend, I'm like, Zell, I think that we are going into a area that is not safe. <laughs> it you know people were walking around there were uh I, I think barrels of fire burning I'm like I don't think it's down there and sure enough we went to a bank and they were like oh that place hasn't been 
there for about 10 or 15 years. So Google actually <laughs> was putting us in harm's way. So if we had had the map and didn't depend on the Internet of Things, that could have resulted in, you know, us not even seeing that at all, let alone following a map in, at nighttime. And then it takes us down there and then we can't get out. You know, that reminds me of that movie. Um, but yeah, the potential to make a workplace life and business processes productive and efficient. Yes, the Internet of Things will always be the forerunner of intellect. It really will. Because if you don't know the answer, you can talk to Google and Google can assist you. It, uh, Alexa can, can assist you. Um, but the efficiency is to make sure that the, the data processing is going to be viable to your business. So entrepreneurs, that is something very special that I think that, um, that we need to recognize. How we learn, how we carry our finances through our social apps and our internet applications, entertainment, shopping, everything. Instacart, <laughs> um, Uber, deliveries from Amazon. These are all the new intellectual ways that applications have gone into fruition for the, the future. And are we absolutely ready for it? Is it affecting our social lives? Is it stopping us from being able to socialize with our neighbors, with our, you know, grocery store workers, because we don't even have to leave our homes anymore. And that's putting us back into the mentality of the slave, of, of the, of the caveman, the caveman mentality. You know, you just go out and see and peek out and see if the sun is shining today. Is that, is that efficient over time? with these internet of things. Socialization is the most valuable, important factor that any human being can have, according to Malik. Yes, and I believe that. You know, during the 2020 pandemic, I stayed open as a community center. I met people, I connected with people, I supported them, I went to them, they came to me. And one thing that I recognized was that the desocialization was the biggest access to people dying alone. They're thinking the world is ending. The pandemic has shut everything down. No one comes to visit. No one calls them. And now they're sick. Their thoughts made them sick. And then in thinking of illness, illness becomes. And when illness becomes, it takes over the body. And when it takes over the body, the mind shuts down and then it's over. That's why a lot of people, especially those who work hard uh, back in the day, they always would say, if you stop moving, then you die. Keep moving, keep it moving. So these are things that... Um, if the internet were to shut down for one day, could you imagine what would the world look like? What would it look like? The broadband width of, you know, 5G is now back to what? We going back to the library. We looking at, you know, maps, the manual things, reading books. What about the video gaming world? Where in the world would the world go if the internet were to shut down for one day and no one would be able to play their games? Oh my God. Would there be a riot, a war? What would happen? And how many of us are putting ourselves in a position to where we are investing into the technology base through hands-on, not financially, hands-on to know how to readjust and work 
our systems behind the scenes if the internet were to shut down. Not too many of us will be at the mercy of the powers that be and the major people who are artificially intelligent enough to connect the compatibility to the internet of things. To get your garage open, you would have to call someone who specializes in that. So we're always going to need someone in the industry of the internet. We're always going to need someone. And that's what I want you to think about in today's podcast. At what point do you feel you will be secure if everything becomes internet accessible under an application? How are you going to make your life work for you? Thank you so much for being here, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing this podcast. You are valuable here. And everyone who is here, you are making these videos possible. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for liking put that thumbs up. There's nothing, you don't have to pay for a thumbs up. However, if you would like to, you know, participate in any way with this channel, please don't hesitate to give me a call. And I am going to put our information right in front of you so that you will have access to how to get in touch with us. I believe I have it here. Yeah. There we go. So if you want to get in touch with us, you know how to do so. Um, I think that all of these topics are valuable. And uh, to the individual who asked the question about, you know, how do we function in business from the position of, there we go. How do we function from the business of branding our business while being connected to all of the internet things. This is a very valuable question. And this is why I love the Chronicles because the Chronicles will always give you an episode of something to consider. And that's why we're here. And I am your host, Dorena Shine. Please don't hesitate to give me a call at the number in front of you. And we're out. Peace. See you next time.